Are you fed up of using the A500 Mini Controller? Well today we've got a solution for you. We'll be checking out some adapters that allow us to use any classic Amiga joystick on our A500 Mini or PC. We'll be able to use one of my favourite joysticks like this Quick Joy, abominations like this little thing, or even the Sega Mega Drive Control Pad. We'll be mainly checking out this Immortal Joysticks USB adapter, but we will compare it to the competition, such as the RD Retro Donkey Design Retronic? Retronic Design? So, grab a cup of tea and welcome City Pandori. Subscribble. The package here is from Immortal Joysticks in the UK. We got it in exchange for some coverage on our channel. We're not being sponsored or anything like that, and we'll tell you exactly what to expect. These adapters here are quite cheap on the website, with options going from £15 and more if you want the case. In our package, we got a nice sticker and an Immortal Joystick USB adapter. Blech. Sure, it's fine. Ooh. So this is the PCB-only version, and it's a very tidy board. We'll be using this to easily convert an Amiga joystick to USB. At one end we got the DB9 connector, and this is where the Amiga joystick plugs in. At the opposite end we have a USB port. We'll need a USB cable, which plugs it up to a computer. And next to that we have a button. On the underneath we have a bare circuit board. Make sure you sit it somewhere safe, so the board has no way of shorting. There's actually six holes on the board ready for some jumper pins, and these are for reflashing the firmware so it can be updated in the future. So let's give it a try with a good old classic, the zip stick. So all we need to do is plug this in. Um. We'll also need a USB-C to USB-A cable, one that can send data. Let's try it first with our mini PC. Shows up as a mortal joystick, didn't need any drivers, and it works straight away. We tried the button on the board, and it shows up as button 8. Let's move on to Steam, and see if we can get this adapter working with some Amiga remakes. First up, the Chaos Engine. And you can play this one online with your friends. Our fire button was also mapped and back, so we couldn't start a game. But it was easily fixed by remapping the controls. Tried Super Frog HD, and this is crap. Couldn't even see the game, and even if it did work, it's a very disappointing title. If you want a decent remake, you should try Zool Redimensioned. Joystick doesn't work straight away, so I need to configure it as a controller in the Steam settings. Skip, skip. Most of the buttons are skipped. Right. Up. Once we're in game, we're sorted. Even though the Wings remake looks incredible, this one seems to be for an analog controller, so we just gave up and played another world. Come a little closer. Come on. Yeah. And this remake flashback is actually really decent. You can play it like the classic, or change options for remade sound or graphics. If you want something a bit more Amiga on your PC, you can try this website, the Amiga Live Project. It's a free download, very small in size, has a load of Amiga games included, and you can also play these online with your friends. And it just works. In the daytime, at night, or even in Liverpool. And it has this banging classic. Sensi, what a game. Yes, I scored it! Uh, yeah. Let's try the quick joy. Looks a bit like a SNES pad, but all the buttons do the same thing with a stick. When loading IK Plus, we found out there's many different versions. There's even three player on this. Daniel Sad! Mr. Miyaki! Oh yeah, hi! A fun button. When it comes to the Sega Mega Drive pad, you could use this on a real Amiga, it would work as a two button controller. B for Fire 1 and C for Fire 2, and the adapter translates it perfectly. Saying that, Fire Button 2 doesn't work straight away in Amiga Live, but this can be fixed very easily and it's explained in the control settings. Basically, we open up FS Launcher, go to Settings, 
then controllers, then double click the adapter. Click West button, followed by button 2 on your controller. Perfect for Wesley. Save settings, and you're good to go. But how is this adapter with the A500 Mini? Well, we're glad to report that it works fine. The button on the adapter functions as a home button, and as far as we can tell, there's very little to no latency on this thing. It's pretty good. And we tried another inbuilt game, Project X, but the second fire button for this game just didn't work. Should be able to upgrade speed. We then tried a two button game in AGS2. And straight away, this works as intended. Up to jump, B to fire, and C for special. Perfection. So let's compare it with a few other solutions. We'll also be testing for latency, which is the time between the button press and when the signal is read by the system. We'll use the same method as Loic Petit. And if you'd like to learn more about testing controllers for input lag, we recommend checking this website out, as it really does some amazing work. We'll start off first with the control pad packed in with the A500 Mini. It has the advantage of being effectively free, but the long travel on the D-pad, combined with inconsistent inputs, make it difficult to recommend. But it does have the buttons, so it can easily navigate the A500 menu and carousel. It's a joystick that was bundled with the CC24 Mini, which plugs in directly via USB. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the classic micro switches, making it feel cheap. And according to reports, it could snap very easily. There are still buttons for the menu, and we have slightly lower input latency than the A500 Mini controller. But let's move on to the adapter by Immortal Joysticks. It's a very affordable and low faff solution, and getting your Amiga joysticks running with USB. The home button on the board allows us to start games, but as we don't have a back button, we can get stuck in folders. While we're in game, both fire buttons work out of the box. Latency is very low, and we're sure that with a firmware update, it can be lowered even further. Next up is the adapter by Retronic Design. We love that this adapter requires no extra cables, and it's very clutter-free. But as it has no extra buttons, we can't start anything from this menu. So we'll need something like this to get started. Then we can play. It's quite low faff, but even though the buttons are configurable, the second button won't work out the box. However, there are multiple firmwares you can flash to this dongle, allowing it to be compatible with many system devices, and they've been improving ever since the release. At first it was a mess, but now we can recommend this. Provided you have something to navigate the menu with. Play one could be for my buddy, then I'll have the joystick. Last up is the DIY solution. We use the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it uses a USB connector. As this is pretty much DIY, we can attach as many buttons as we like, so we can have a home button, or even a back if we wish. Both buttons work as intended, and latency is exceptionally low. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a faff to make, but Retro32 have them on the website for sale, albeit much more expensive than the previous two. Each of the USB adapters we just had on are great in their own unique way. What we need to remember is that any of these solutions are much, much better than the A500 Mini controller. And of course, we can have much more fun with our own stick. I'll grab my stick. A stick of wriggly spearmint gum. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori. I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra.